recesses of the committee to object. Objection noted. The quorum is present. We are conducting this hearing on the impeachment inquiry into President Donald J. Trump. Presentations from the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence and the House Judiciary Committee pursuant to House Resolution 660 and the Special Judiciary Committee procedures that are, that are described in Section 4A of that resolution. Here is how the committee will proceed for this hearing. I will make an opening statement, and then I will recognize the ranking member for an opening statement. After that, we will hear two sets of presentations. We, we will hear 30-minute pre opening arguments from councils for the majority and the minority Aaron of this committee. The committee will come to order. Obviously, I shouldn't have to remind everyone present that the audience is here uh, to observe, but not to demonstrate, not to indicate agreement or disagreement with any witness or with any member of the committee. The audience is here to observe only, and uh, we will maintain decorum in the hearing room. And again, I will say, here is how the committee will proceed for this hearing. I will make an opening statement. And then I will recognize the ranking member for an opening statement. Okay, thank you very much. The IG report just came out, and I was just briefed on it. And uh, it's a disgrace what's happened uh, with respect to the things that were done to our country. It should never again happen to another president. It is uh, incredible, far worse than I would have ever thought possible. And it's, uh, it's an embarrassment to our country. It's dishonest. It's, uh, it's everything that a lot of people thought it would be, except far worse. So I'm going to get some very detailed briefing, but briefings, but they, uh, they are uh, — it's a very sad — it's a very sad day when I see that. Very sad day when a lot of people see that. They had known nothing. It was concocted. And you say what you want. That was a, a — probably something that's never happened in the history of our country. Uh, Pam Bondi, I think you were able to look at some of the report and can address a little bit of it very well, if you might say a few words. I'd like to ask Kellyanne. I know you've looked at it also. Please. Sure, President. You know, so many of us um, who are career law enforcement today are outraged. And I think the American people really should be terrified that this could happen to you um, when we're supposed to live in a society of integrity and honesty. And this happened to the president, not just to the president. You know, this should be a good day, but it's not. It's a horrible day for the country. That this could happen to the president of the United States, that they could fabricate, falsify emails, lie, and omit exculpatory evidence in order to continue this witch hunt against the President of the United States. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Now we have the Durham investigation. Thank you very much. Uh, Kellyanne, please. Mr. President, thank you. I was the campaign manager during that time, and I would ask a simple question. Why no defensive briefing? Why not contact the Trump campaign? Why not contact candidate Trump or Governor Pence or Governor Christie, who at the time was arranging for the intelligence briefings for candidate Trump and was a public servant, a government official at that time as governor of New Jersey with a full intelligence uh, security clearance to receive that type of information. So you can't blame people for feeling that it was unfair and that the fix was in. And to think that perhaps people lied and spied and tried to subvert democracy just because they wanted someone else to win or just because they have a different political point of view. That is not the way the world's greatest democracy has been formed and can survive at a time such as this. I will just uh, repeat something that Attorney General Barr said today, Mr. President, that this was an intrusive investigation of a U.S. presidential campaign on the thinnest of suspicions. 
And that is chilling language for any of us who want our government to work for us and not against us. I only wish they had come and informed us, Mr. President, and we could have had the knowledge and the wherewithal to act at that time and not put the taxpayers through two plus protracted years of nonsense. Thank you, sir. Well, they fabricated evidence and they lied to the courts and they did all sorts of things to have it go their way. And this was something that uh, we can never allow ha to happen again. The report actually, and especially when you look into it and the details of the report, are far worse than anything I would have even imagined. What they were doing and what they would have done if I didn't make a certain move, a certain move that was a very important move, because it would have been even worse if that's possible. And they might have been able to succeed. This was an overthrow of government. This was an attempted overthrow. And a lot of people were in on it. And they got caught. They got caught red-handed. And I look forward to the Durham report, which is coming out in the not-too-distant future. Uh, it's got his own information, which is this information plus, plus, plus. And it's an incredible thing that happened, and we're lucky we caught him. I think I'm going to put this down as one of our great achievements, because what we found and what we saw, uh, never, ever should this happen again in our country. All right, with that, today we gather to discuss the urgent national priority that we've been working on so long and so hard, expanding educational freedom through school choice so that every American child can get a great education. We're grateful to be joined by Vice President Mike Pence, Secretary Betsy DeVos, Senators Ted Cruz and Mike Lee, Representative Bradley Byrne, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, Pennsylvania House Speaker Mike Terzai, Tennessee State Representative